By now, it's no secret that Haruo Sakaki, the protagonist of the Godzilla anime trilogy, rubs a lot of people the wrong way, especially in how he commits suicide at the end of the last film. Many of us see the act as unnecessary, not to mention a sign that Haruo had not undergone any growth over the course of this three-part story. I stand by this perception, mind you, but in contemplating it, a thought has struck me. This is not the first time a Godzilla movie has had a character commit suicide with the intention of serving the greater good, but that other character is one whom audiences have had a much kinder reaction to. I speak, naturally, of Dr. Daisuke Sarazawa from the original 1954 film, which started it all. There are parallels to be found between Sarazawa and Haruo. Both live in a less-than-ideal world, both have a proverbial dark cloud hanging over them, and both sacrifice their lives in the hopes of averting a horrible future for mankind. Despite the trilogy's lack of understanding for the Godzilla series as a whole, I can't help but feel that these similarities must have been intentional. Yet one of these characters is accepted by the fandom at large, while the other is rejected. So why is that? Why does Sarazawa succeed while Haruo fails? To find out, we really need to examine these two a bit closer, for it all comes down to the execution. There's something about Sarazawa that's easy to forget. He's barely in the first Godzilla movie. He's in it so infrequently, in fact, that it would be accurate to call him a secondary character. Sarazawa spends most of the film removed from the action, not taking an active role in the story until the finale. The only character he has a personal connection with prior to that point is Emiko, and even though he's engaged to marry her, he doesn't seem to have much of a connection with her. So why is he considered both a fan favorite and the standout character of the film? Part of it is thanks to the amazing performance by actor Akihiko Hirata, and part of it is because every single second Sarazawa is on screen is devoted to making sure we understand who he is. First and foremost, we have the greater context of his situation, as he is living in post-war Japan, a nation reeling not only from a humiliating defeat, but also from being hit by the most devastating weapon ever conceived by the human race. Now, of course, Sarazawa is not the only Japanese citizen living in this humiliated society, but he seems to be taking it harder than everyone else. He is isolated from the rest of the cast almost to the point of being a hermit, in fact, considering his home is spared from both of Godzilla's attacks, it's safe to say he likely doesn't live in the same part of Tokyo as everyone else. His reaction to footage of the Japanese self-defense force attempting to kill Godzilla is one not of national pride, but of anger and, dare I say, disgust. Then there's his greatest shame of all, the fact that he was devoting his scientific research to finding something that would benefit humanity, only to have invented a deadly new weapon in the form of the Oxygen Destroyer. The reason behind all of these traits is as obvious as the nose on his face. Or rather, the eye patch. This is not merely a costume piece, but a visual clue. Despite every other primary character living in the same defeated nation as him, only Sarazawa has any sort of physical injury. While we don't learn the specifics of what happened to his eye, his dialogue indicates that it has something to do with the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Once you realize that, the pieces fall into place. Sarazawa isn't just depressed because of greater circumstances, he is actually a direct witness to the horrors of the war's end. This explains why he has such a negative reaction to any site of military activity, why he has cut himself off from the world, and why he feels such shame at having created a weapon of devastating power equal to the weapon which forced Japan into surrendering. That brings us to his fateful decision at the end. He is, of course, given a difficult choice to make. He can either use his new invention to defeat Godzilla and thus run the risk of escalating the Cold War, or he can do nothing and leave Godzilla unopposed to terrorize the world. As Ogata put it, he had to weigh the potential reality of his fear against the actual reality of Godzilla. Ultimately, Sarazawa decides that Godzilla must be defeated, but the Oxygen Destroyer must never be used again after that, hence why he destroys all of his research connected to it. As for his suicide, that's portrayed as somewhat of a rash decision made without much time to really think about it. His suicide comes as a surprise to everyone, and an attempt is even made to save him. Sarazawa may very well believe he has to die to ensure that all traces of his invention are erased, but nobody else does. 
As a result, his sacrifice, despite his noble intentions, is nonetheless a tragedy, a moment that makes everyone wonder why it had to come to this. The loss of Sarazawa is depicted as a loss that should not have happened, and thus it reinforces the film's overall message about the horrors of nuclear holocaust. So now that we've established why Sarazawa works, what about Haruo? As I said earlier, Haruo may have been designed to mirror Sarazawa's arc, but that doesn't mean the execution works. Look at his circumstances. Now it's true that Haruo lives in some terrible conditions. He is one of the last surviving humans to have escaped Earth, and he now resides on a ship where resources and things people once took for granted are in short supply. Due to these conditions, he is filled with anger and hatred for Godzilla, the one who drove mankind to flee Earth, and he appears to be the only one aboard the ship that feels this way to such an extreme. Ah, but this is where the differences start to emerge, for unlike Sarazawa, we are never given any reason why Haruo is the most enraged of all the humans and aliens around him. He certainly has no physical injuries. In fact, he appears to be in very good health, all things considered. You might say his passionate anger stems from how his parents remain behind on Earth to be killed by Godzilla. But does that really make him special? Are we expected to believe that he is the only person aboard the Aratrum who had to leave his loved ones behind? Was his really the only nuclear family to be broken up by the flight from Earth? That seems highly improbable. Everyone aboard the Aratra must have left somebody behind, yet none of them are as embittered towards Godzilla as Haruo. Well, then you might say it was because Metpheus singled him out for manipulation, but even that doesn't quite hold up to scrutiny. According to the Planet Eater, Metpheus chose Haruo because he was already especially angry, more than anyone else on the ship. This could have been fixed if, say, Metpheus had picked Haruo at random to mold into Ghidorah's Rage Anchor, which is a far more disturbing prospect, for it tells us that anyone could potentially serve his dark purposes. As things currently are, however, Haruo is still framed as the Chosen One, the Special, the only person unique enough to do this kind of thing. Ergo, Haruo is unique simply because he is unique. Only he is the angriest person in the universe, and no one else understands him, and why do I suddenly feel like I'm describing the contents of some emo teenager's diary? So nothing is done to justify why Haruo is different from the crowd, and that is another part of what makes his suicide ring hollow. As I said, Sarazawa's choice to die with Godzilla was made under the wire. Time was of the essence, and thus he had no time to really think his decision through, nor did anyone else have time to realize what he was planning and thus prevent it. Haruo, on the other hand, has plenty of time to think about it. Assuming the Hotua have a similar gestation rate as their human predecessors, which I think is a fairly safe assumption to make, we can therefore conclude that several months passed between the defeat of Ghidorah and Dr. Martin's reactivation of the Last Vulture. Haruo has thus had plenty of time to fully contemplate the nature of Metpheus' plan and his role within it, and knowing that role, he also has the time and opportunity to make some changes in order to thwart that plan. Yet he chooses not to. He seeks no help from anyone, not his fellow humans and not the Hotua who are teaching everyone a new way of living. He doesn't even resolve on his own to take the harder but better course of action, instead opting for the easier and worse option. Now remember, unlike Sarazawa, Haruo is making this decision solely based on his own feelings about Godzilla, a creature he no longer has any reason to hold a grudge against. Sarazawa was already living in a terrible world, and he made a spur-of-the-moment choice to keep it from getting worse, whether or not it was actually the right one. By the end of the anime trilogy, however, Haruo is living in a world that is actually pretty nice and willing to accept him. There is no threat anymore, since Godzilla leaves the Hotua alone, and Ghidorah is gone. Now yes, Ghidorah is somehow still alive in another dimension, but if he is drawn to Haruo's hate, I would think that would motivate Haruo to let go of his hate, thus robbing him of a beacon. Again, maybe this could have been fixed if Ghidorah began manifesting as soon as Haruo's hatred returned, thus putting Haruo under the wire as well. But the movie says that Ghidorah will just show up eventually, however long it takes, so there is no immediate pressure motivating his choice. Furthermore, the evidence suggests that if Ghidorah did manifest on Earth, Godzilla would probably defeat him. 
Remember, as soon as Ghidorah started to exist on Earth, the tides turn against him and he is repelled almost immediately. It sure seems to me that this Ghidorah might not be as powerful as people keep insisting he is. As a result, Haruo suicide feels like a rash decision for all of the wrong reasons. It's that disturbing mindset of, if I died everyone would be happier, the world would be so much better off without me, that often leads many people in real life to commit suicide. Is it meant to be a cautionary tale? Well, if it is, I have to ask why he was deified by the Hotua at the end. That just feeds into egocentrism, the idea of, if I died, then they'd appreciate me, then they'd realize all the good I did for them. Hence, Haruo's suicide is not presented as tragic, but is instead glorified, which is the one thing suicide should never be. You know what's really astounding about all of this? The original Godzilla is only 96 minutes long, and even though Dr. Serizawa's screen time barely comprises a tenth of that, not a single second of that time is wasted. It all works towards making Serizawa a well-rounded, understandable character. Meanwhile, the anime trilogy is nearly three times longer than Godzilla, most of that time is devoted to Haruo, and yet nothing is done to explain why he should stand out in any way, or why his suicide should be seen as anything but a shameless ploy by the creative team. As time marches on, Sarazawa and Haruo will serve as opposing examples of how to write a tragic character, with the former being the right way and the latter being the wrong way. To invert a quote from the disembodied voice of Metpheus, time is not on this trilogy's side. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it, as well as subscribe to the channel for more content of a similar nature. Also, check the description for links to our Twitter, DeviantArt, and Patreon pages, as well as the Amazon link for the novel Operation Red Dragon The Daikaiju Wars Part 1, penned by yours truly. Thank you all, and we appreciate your support.